Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India bans Islamic group PFI accuses it of terrorism. Ishak Dar takes oath as Pakistan's new finance minister vows to tame inflation. And senior Afghan Taliban leader calls for reopening schools for girls. And now for all the details. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Tuesday held meetings with U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and Secretary of State Antony Blinken in Washington to boost bilateral ties. Both the sides discussed the Ukraine conflict and its repercussions and reviewed issues including the Indo-Pacific and visa concerns. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar met United States National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan on Tuesday at the White House and discussed the Ukraine conflict and its repercussions, approaches to advance free, open and secure Indo-Pacific and issues in South Asia. The White House said that the both sides reviewed progress in the U.S.-India strategic partnership and exchanged views on the global and regional priorities, including the implications of Russia's aggression against Ukraine and its impact on food and energy insecurity around the world. Jay Shankar also met his counterpart, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Tuesday and discussed issues including the Ukraine conflict, its fuel food fertilizer implications, climate change and G20. Among other issues, Jay Shankar flagged concerns over the visa backlog for Indians, to which Blinken said he was sensitive about the issue and assured it will be resolved. We have a plan when it comes to India to address the backlog of visas that's built up. I think you'll see that play out in the coming months, but it's something that we're very focused on. These connections, these people-to-people -people ties, whether it's students, whether it's um, uh, business people, uh, whether it's uh, tourists, whether it's family, this is what really links us together. During his 11-day visit to the U.S. that concluded on Wednesday, Jay Shankar held over 50 official diplomatic engagements to boost bilateral cooperation. He also addressed the U.N. General Assembly on September 24th. The Indian government declared Islamic group the Popular Front of India and its affiliates unlawful on Wednesday, accusing them of involvement in terrorism. A ban has been imposed on the group for five years after authorities detained more than 100 PFI members this month. India declared the Islamic group Popular Front of India, PFI and its affiliates unlawful on Wednesday, accusing them of involvement in terrorism and banning them for five years after authorities detained more than 100 PFI members this month. India's Interior Ministry in a statement said the PFI and its affiliates had been found to be involved in serious offences, including terrorism and its financing, targeted gruesome killings and disregarding the constitutional setup. The government said it found a number of instances of international linkages of PFI with global terrorist groups, adding that some of its members had joined Islamic State and participated in terror activities in Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan. While the PFI members called the move a propaganda, firebrand Muslim leader Asaduddin Owaisi said it is a ban on any Muslim who wishes to speak his mind. This ban on PFI cannot be supported because actions of some individuals who commit crime does not mean that the organization itself should, must be banned. Supreme Court has also held that mere association with an organization is not enough to convict someone. Uh, a draconian ban of this kind is dangerous as it is a ban on any Muslim who wishes to speak his mind. Meanwhile, members of the regional Maharashtra Navnirman Sena party welcomed the move by bursting firecrackers and distributing sweets in Pune city. 
India has been the victim of some major terrorist attacks over the past two decades, most linked to Islamists based in neighboring Pakistan. Earlier on Tuesday, the PFI had denied accusations of violence and anti-national activities when dozens of its members were detained in various states. The PFI has supported causes like protests against a 2019 citizenship law that many Muslims deem discriminatory, as well as protests in Karnataka state this year, demanding the right for Muslim women students to wear the hijab in class. Senior PMLN leader Ishak Dar takes oath as Pakistan's new finance minister on Wednesday and vote to rein inflation and cut interest rates amid the country's worst economic crisis. Opposition leader Imran Khan has called Dar the biggest con man of Pakistan and said the national treasury has been handed over to an absconder who fled the country to save himself from a conviction in a corruption case. Pakistan Prime Ministerial aide and senior PMNL leader Ishak Dar took oath as Pakistan's new finance minister on Wednesday for the fourth time as the country struggles to resurrect its cash-strapped economy, also hit by unprecedented floods. The 72-year-old leader had been in self-exile in the UK since 2017 after being accused in a corruption case. He said that he will work to rein in inflation and cut interest rates and promised a strong response to resolve the country's worst economic crisis. This came after Mifta Ismail stepped down from the post to make way for Dar after a meeting with PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif in London this past weekend. Opposition PTI party chairman and former Prime Minister Imran Khan earlier on Tuesday called Dar the biggest con man of Pakistan and said the national treasury had been handed over to an absconder. He said the country, which was progressing fast after 17 years during the PTI government's tenure, is now on the verge of bankruptcy under PMLN rule. In his fourth time in the role, Ishak Dar, a chartered accountant, must tackle a balance of payment crisis, foreign reserves that cover barely a month's imports, historic lows in the rupee, and inflation exceeding 27% in the aftermath of the devastating floods. Moving on. Experts and human rights activists discuss the proliferation of terrorist organizations in the South Asia region, especially in Pakistan, on the sidelines of the UNHRC session in Geneva this week. They raised concern that Pakistani military establishment has been sponsoring terrorist groups that have targeted minorities throughout the country. The European Foundation for South Asian Studies, EFSAS, recently organized an event on the human rights situation in South Asia on the sidelines of UNHRC session in Geneva where experts and activists discussed the proliferation of terrorist organizations, especially in Pakistan. Activists stressed that the Pakistani military establishment has been sponsoring terrorist groups that have targeted minorities throughout the country and have been supported by state authorities. They added ethnic Pashtuns are labeled terrorists and thousands of them have been killed in fake encounters over the years. The activists urged the international community to intervene. In the recent days, uh, you people have seen like uh, Pakistani military establishment or the secret uh, agencies uh, has started a uh, controversial negotiation with the uh, Tehrik Taliban Pakistan who are directly involved and who have uh, confessed uh, the brutal killing of innocent Pashtuns uh, in thousands of no in numbers and uh, because of their brutality uh, thousands of uh, uh, people have been di uh, internally displaced and they have lost uh, their businesses, their properties, their land. The panel also exchanged views on issues including the future of peace in South Asia, need of strengthening democracy and state effectiveness in countries, especially in Pakistan. On the sidelines of the UNHRC session, activists from the region also held demonstrations and urged the international community to take note of grim human rights situation in Pakistan and its sponsorship of terrorism. In news from Afghanistan, a senior member of the Taliban-run government in Afghanistan has called on the country's new rulers to reopen schools for girls beyond the sixth grade, saying there is no valid reason in Islam for the ban. The rare moderate voice comes amid harsh measures imposed by the Islamic Emirate since they seized power last year. 
Sheer Mohammad Abbas Tanik Zai, the Deputy Foreign Minister in the Taliban-run government in Afghanistan, has called on the country's new rulers to reopen schools for girls beyond the sixth grade, saying there is no valid reason in Islam for the ban. The rare, moderate voice came during a Taliban gathering in Kabul on Tuesday amid the harsh measures imposed by the Islamic Emirate since seizing power in August 2021. It has been now over an year that the Taliban has shut down girls' secondary schools across the country, ordered women to wear headscarves in the workplace and to cover their faces in public. The Taliban have said they are working on a plan to open secondary schools for girls, but have not given a time frame, drawing international condemnation and sanctions. The UN estimates more than one million girls have been barred from attending high school over the past year. The international community has made ensuring human rights, especially rights of girls and women, as key demands for any future recognition of the Taliban. Afghanistan's assets, which have remained frozen due to sanctions, have severely hampered banking, business, and development, leading to greater insecurity, poverty, and isolation. Experts have alarmed early effects of climate change are already visible in Bangladesh. with several areas at risk of completely being wiped off by the mighty rivers residents in munshi ganj district have lived amid worries over the last couple of months as the padma river has continued devouring most of the homesteads and vast crop lands since the start of the monsoon in recent years natural disasters such as floods have caused faster than usual erosion in settlements near rivers in the south asian country of bangladesh residents of a village in munshi ganj district have lived amid worries over the last couple of months as the padma river has taken a sharp turn since the start of monsoon season and continued to devour most of the homesteads and vast crop lands authorities are dumping sandbags as part of precautions aur bari bhangi amar tinda choto choto tinda dosala gor asulo ওই যে তোশালা গড় আমার গড়বাড়ি সব ফিটফাট আসলো সব আমার নদে নিয়া আমি অন ফতর বিকারি এই আমার এই গড়বাড়ি নিয়া এক জায়গা খালি জায়গা চল নিয়া বুড়াই দিছি এই আমি কেমনে তুলমু কেমনে বাসগুন এই আমার মাথায় খেলা কাছে না বাংলাদেশ হ্যাজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য লার্জেস্ট এন্ড দ্য মোস্ট ডিজাস্টার প্রোন পপুলেশন ডেল্টাস ইন দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড আ गवर्नमेंट অ্যাসেসমেন্ট হ্যাজ ফোরকাস্ট এট লিস্ট 17 এরিয়াস অ্যাক্রস 12 डिस्ट्रিক্টস আর এট রিস্ক অফ কমপ্লিটলি বিং ওয়াইপড অফ ইন্ডিকেটিং আর্লি সাইনস অফ ক্লাইমেট চেঞ্জ Following the devastating June-July floods this year, around 974 homesteads were reportedly devoured by the Jamuna River alone in the Siraj Ganj district. The World Bank said in a report last year that Bangladesh will have more than 19 million internal climate refugees by 2050, representing almost half of the projected number for the entire South Asian region. As people revel in the pomp and glory of Hindu festival of Durga Puja in India's West Bengal state, a pandal or maki in Kolkata city is depicting the lifestyle and hurdles faced by sex workers. Organizers say they hope that this will bring a change in the people's approach towards them. People are flocking pandal or makis with one of them symbolizing the lifestyle and hurdles faced by sex workers in India's eastern Kolkata city as they revel in the pomp and glory of Hindu festival of Durga Puja dedicated to goddess Durga. The themed pandal has installed India's first silicon idol of a deity depicting a mother through which the organizers have tried to convey that even a sex worker has the form of a mother. It is grabbing many eyeballs and people are welcoming the concept. The organizers said they hope that this will help bring a change in the people's approach towards sex workers. Prostitute ko bahut jyada ayn hai. Unke liye law kiya hai government. High court, Supreme Court bahut ayn chuka hai. Lekin unko vastav khetro mein उनको बहुत प्रतिकूल परिस्थिति है तो प्रतिकूल परिस्थिति कटाने के लिए समाज जीवन के आने के लिए हम ए पैंडल बनाया 
Another pandal or temporary festive installment in the city resembled the iconic Shish Mahal or Glass Palace with its interior covered in mirrors. While Navratri is a nine-day festival dedicated to Goddess Durga and her various incarnations, Durga Puja is celebrated in eastern parts of India during the last five days of Navratri. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsiaNewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebookcom newsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.